Well, hello! It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And, I almost called this uh, Pens in Use Coronavirus Edition, but uh, decided not to. <laughs> I, I hear uh, videos that use coronavirus in their title are being demonetized, so I'm going to be careful. But I do have some coronavirus and science Olympiad news for you uh, from North Dakota. So, let's take a look at the pens. And I probably had a call to action I was supposed to do, but I don't see one written on my Evernote page, so there it is. So, from left to right, we'll give you a close-up of these pens later. I have a central pen, 100820. I have a pen BBS, 355. I have a Delta Dolce Vita Masterpiece. I also may have a skipped meal in there if I look a little shaky. I did eat now, but I kind of got busy this morning, and about noon I said, wait, breakfast? <laughs> I haven't had any yet. So, I had lunch. Um, I'm going to have a very good supper, though. Uh, Pelican M800. So I think I'm a little shaky because the lunch hasn't quite gotten to my body yet. Uh, Garant Silke from East Germany. Almost empty, I think. Uh, Geha 326 from West Germany. Kaveco V14S, also from West Germany. Kaveco 37G, also from West Germany. Platinum 3776 from Japan. By the way, this uh, Pelican is from Germany, not East or West. Uh, Platinum 3776 from Japan, which is in Japan. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember what I was going to say there. Doggone it. Parker! Uh, vector just like the one that I had when I first my very first fountain pen but it is not my very first fountain pen so who knows what's happened to my very first fountain pen it was lost during one of my moves here in North Dakota and a Lamy 2000 because I am back to using it as my daily writer pen as always I'll be recording this in my Bomo art journal and I don't know if you can see it with the focus the way it is, but there is snow flying outside. Not a lot, uh, but makes nice ground effect. And uh, yeah, it's cold out there, so it's good to be indoors playing with pens, even if this is a little bit late. And I do apologize for my lateness. Uh, last night, well, I was going to film it when I got home from school, but then we had exciting coronavirus news and... Uh, so then I kind of forgot about it in the process of everything else going on. So here I am today. My first pen is a Central Pen 100820. And I know that it's actually March 14th now, but this is the March 13th edition. And as I write this, I think I've used the sink in this pen before. I'm going to have to search that out and find out because now I'm curious. But just that experience of seeing this kind of milky brown appear on the paper up from this nib is striking a memory cord. This is a vintage ink that is supposed to be, uh, or not vintage ink, French ink that is supposed to be friendly to vintage pens. California Havan. I've also become quite taken with their line, although they do seem to focus a bit more than I would like on certain color families and not on others. So uh, I don't own or plan to own their full collection of inks. So this is a Czechoslovakian pen. 
One of my favorites, this is the pen that got me interested in the pens from behind the Iron Curtain in Central and Eastern Europe. Because what a high quality, very well made, very incredible writer pen it is. Uh, people like me probably wouldn't have owned one if we'd lived in the Czechoslovakia of the day. But... I live in 21st century United States, so I get to own one. My next pen, I'll remember to show it off before I write this time, uh, has been on a hiatus. I pulled it back into service this week. Um, you know, what I'm finding, it's, it's a bulk filler, kind of like the Conid bulk filler. And uh, what I'm finding is that this ink in it just lasts forever and ever, which is by design. That's the whole idea behind a bulk filler pen. But... Uh, you get bored with it. <laughs> so it does seem to be holding a good seal. And I like this pen so much better with this Nema sign nib on it. It does happen to be a Nema sign re entry nib. And I am sad that there will be no more Nema sign nibs. Oops, that's not a Nema sign. <laughs> Sorry. The nib is Pen BBS 355 with a Nema sign broad. And the ink is Califolio. And just for giggles and snorts, I don't remember if I did this the last time this pen came out of hibernation, but I chose to not write with it until I started filming the video. And as you can see, it was marvelous. No problem keeping up. This is a very good, very high quality pen. I may not have particularly cared for the nib that it came with, but I like the pen a lot. And nibs can be changed, which I did. Um, we have a Delta Dolce Vita Masterpiece. Delta is no more. I bought it mainly because I was curious about their Fusion nib. I knew it was a gimmick, but I just really wanted to try one. What it is, it's a very good steel nib with a, with a flimsy piece of gold glued onto it. And just a standard feed. Nothing special about it. So if you can temper your expectations and accept what the pen actually is, you do have a very nice writing experience. If you expect that piece of gold to actually add something to it, uh, no, you're going to be disappointed. So my ink is KWZ Grapefruit, which is a very uh, brightly happy colored ink. I enjoy it. Very summery, especially on such a gray day as today. And since most of these are going to be kind of dismal colors, it's a nice little splash of color in the collection. This next one is a Pelican M800. This has been here for a few weeks in a row now. The reason it's been in, for here for a few weeks in a row is this ink. I mean, there's a lot of ink in this pen. This pen holds gallons and gallons of ink. Okay, that may be a slight exaggeration. So this is a Pelican M800 broad. And the ink in it is Rohrer and Klingner. Alt Goldgrün. That 
that's, I don't know if I want to call that a happy color, but that is a nice color. The Garant Silka. East German pen. Very, very nice pen. You know, a smaller pen, but it is a very nice pen. And I think I've mentioned every t single time this has appeared on video with this ink in it. This one really shows off this ink extremely well. Deatramentis. Aubergine. And uh, thanks to my gardening, I discovered that I really like eggplants. Very versatile um, vegetable slash fruit that you can use. Um, I don't know that they have much particular flavor by themselves, but they're just useful in so many different ways. And they're attractive. I mean, that's a vegetable you can grow in your front yard as a decorative. Because it's just so, it's a very nice understated vegetable. Understated flower. Just so elegant looking. This is a Geha 326. It was my first impression. I don't remember if it was this week or last week. I know. I don't even remember when I filmed it. All this kind of jumbles together after I film them because they usually have been filming in batch so Geha 326 I don't know the nib but I did learn that this P stands for Patronin I think it was Patronin I may remember that wrong all of a sudden but anyway the German word for cartridge which it is a cartridge converter pen uh, I have two cartridges both vintage. One has been refilled with this ink. The other one is still has the original ink in it. Uh, Geha 326. Sorry, drawing a blank there. Um, Geha 326. This is sorry. Wow, I was really drawing a blank there. Noodlers. Rattler Eel Red. That may seem like an odd choice for an ink, um, but I'll tell you why I chose it. It has the reputation, I don't know, I mean, I'm probably biased, uh, but it seems like it cleans out stains pretty well, and I know I've read that from other people. I just don't have a good reputable source on that or study on that, just uh, people's experience. And if you, if you know anything about science, that's not really a scientific deal at all so my next pen looks very similar at least from the outside this is a Caveco V14S probably the pen that got me into vintage this was one of the first two vintage pens I ever owned And I found it just so attractive. It doesn't hurt that it writes well. Uh, don't expect a lot of flex with this pen. This isn't that sort of pen. This is just a good daily writer type of pen. Uh, the ink in it is Pilot Blue Black. That is a color that I really like from Pilot. Uh, it does sort of have a smell of dissection fluid, but it's just a very attractive shade of blue-black. So today I was writing a, before filming this, I was writing a pen pal letter, and uh, I, 
in one of the pens I was writing with the Parker Quink Black. You haven't seen it yet. Uh, but then I switched to this pen and thought I was writing with the Parker Blue Black. Because um, I didn't look at my list, I just assumed. And then I moved on to um, start writing with a pen that I knew had Parker Washable Blue in it. Only uh, that pen was empty. At that point is when I realized that, wait a second, that wasn't Parker Blue Black. It was Pilot Blue Black. So uh, I decided to ink this pen up with Parker Blue Black. So, yeah, you get to see Parker Blue Black next to Quebec, or next to Pilot Blue Black. Part of me is tempted to ink up another pen with Aurora Blue Black. We'll see if anybody goes empty or if I get bored with it. Oh, and I forgot the name of the pen. So we're going to do this out of order. <laughs> Talking instead of writing. Caveco 37 slash 37 G. It's one of those slim black pens that I like. I just realized that I didn't actually show it to you. I just dove into my ink story and started writing. But what I noticed right away in writing with this ink just how much brighter it was than the pilot blue black so very different interpretation on blue black so that's why I'd kind of like to try it out um, you know with compared to the Aurora so if we get another pen empty here maybe I will do that and there's a couple contenders in the lineup this week like I mentioned the the Garant is almost empty so slim black pen you know, not everybody loves these. Sometimes I get mocked for my liking of slim black pens, but doggone. There's just something about them. Uh, we get to the Platinum 3776. Uh, this pen has one of my favorite nibs from Platinum in it. It is the uh, Platinum Soft Fine. I noticed that they don't that the only soft nibs they have are the fine and the medium. I suppose that's an economic thing, uh, but I always you know I think it'd be interesting to see a soft extra fine or maybe a soft broad. I've heard that there is a soft broad, but I've never seen one for sale. So I don't know if that's actually true or not, or if maybe it was true at one time. This ink is a carbon black, which is a pigmented ink. Which is a fancy way of saying it's a whole bunch of nanoparticles suspended in, well, water and some other junk. So this ink really just dries on top of the paper and becomes very waterproof. In fact, uh, Pierre Gustafson recently talked about it in a video of his own. You know, and it's a nice ink for uh, if you're into watercolor because once it dries it's relatively waterproof. It takes a little more maintenance in keeping it cleaned up in your pen. Uh, I've honestly had it in this pen for far too long. So, uh, you know, this I got fixated on using it in this pen to clean out or to do these labels like you saw. I'm working on a new pen storage system and these labels are perfect for it. And uh, anyway, I just had it in my head. I want them all labeled in Pelican, or I'm sorry, in Platinum Carbon Black. So that's what I've been doing. So that pen has had it in for far too long, so the cleaning may be interesting. But I think as long as I don't let it dry out in there, I should be okay. Uh, my very first pen, purchased when I was about 9 or 10 years old, I couldn't tell you exactly. It was fall of my fourth grade year, so that would have made me either 9 or 10. Because uh, I turned my birthdays in the fall. But anyway, uh, Parker Vector. This is not the one that I purchased back then. I don't know what happened to my original. Uh, it disappeared in one of my moves here in North Dakota, and I never found it again. 
you know, there is that faint hope that someday I'll see it again. But so far that has not happened. But this, uh, the original Vector and I had many happy years together. We, uh, you know, I've always been a writer. So what attracted me to it, besides the price, was uh, I just liked writing with it. So I wrote for many years with a Parker Vector, took notes with it at school. I wasn't one of those kids who loses pens at the drop of a hat. Uh, took it to college with me, took it to my jobs with me and generally was very happy with it. Um, then one of my moves here in North Dakota, I lost it. And then uh, sometime while I've lived in this town, I just got interested in fountain pens more than just as a utilitarian writing instrument. And I, I did own two others. I had a Parker, uh, what was it, a Parker Frontier and a Cross Century, I think. And uh, I no longer own either of them. I gave them away. But uh, anyway, I just got interested in, the, in a, getting a piston filler, and I wondered if I could afford one. And I found uh, the Noodler's Nib Creeper. And somehow from there I got sucked into this whole hobby where uh, instead of just, yep, yeah, that's the pen I use, it became also a real appreciation of the instrument and the variety the instrument comes in just an appreciation of all the finishes available and so on. Um, so my last pen is what's usually my daily writer. It's what the Parker Vector once was for me. This is a Lamy 2000. Now it's taken a break for a number of weeks here since Christmas. Uh, mainly I just wanted to try out other pens as daily writers. I also ended up changing up my black ink that I was using in them. I found that this pen feathers more on certain paper than others. Uh, it's a little more free-flowing with the ink, but the line here looks perfectly good, perfectly comparable to the Parker Quink here. Uh, just darker. This is a darker ink that I use in it. And right now I've been using the Pelican 4001, Brilliant Black. I do have a soft spot for Lamy Black. In fact, I did a, a video a number of years ago now about picking out my favorite black ink. And, uh, you know, the Lamy Black won. But I have such a big bottle of this stuff that I need to make a dent in it. And it may be of interest also, uh, I always do an Evernote link to these videos and I, and I put photographs, usually with these pens in use is I just do a photograph of all the pens laying together and then I do a photograph of all the writing samples. And uh, But the nice thing with it, the phone, because I take the pictures on a cell phone, yeah I'll admit it, uh, does take very high quality pictures and you can get a pretty good close look. So if you want to compare three different black inks and two different blue black inks up here, side by side, go nuts. You can. That's what I provide the links for. I also do post these on Instagram. I forget. I shouldn't zoom while I'm talking. There we go. Wow. That took far enough. Uh, I usually forget during the week to post my review photos on Instagram. Sometimes I remember, but I more often forget. But I always remember to put my pens in use on Instagram. So, uh, But the thing with Instagram is you can't zoom in and study the picture as closely there. Uh, this page is curling. I'm going to blame the fact that it got all wet right here with all that ink. So I laid down a fortune in ink. The pictures don't always have the best color correcting either. So those are the pens and inks that I've been using this week. Uh, as I uh, filmed my pens in use last week, I mentioned that 
this week, which would have been on Thursday this week, uh, the 12th, I would be taking my students to science, regional science Olympiad competition. That did not go well this year. Uh, my students were not prepared. Um, just uh, a general lack of urgency about preparing ahead of time and just too much last minute work. And my blame would be in not getting after them. I uh, need to figure out a way to have regular meetings with students. It's hard because it's an after school thing and uh, it's optional and it's science, and, but I, I need to find a way just to give them some accountability. Uh, it, it, this has worked in the past, but this year it did not, so I need to work on that. Um, so we didn't, we, we had some ribbons, you know, so basically the students who'd done stuff ahead of time and actually done what you're supposed to do with Science Olympiad got ribbons. Who knew? So we're not going to state, but it turns out if there was a year we weren't going to state, this may be the year. Uh, several other regions have already canceled their regional Science Olympiad. Uh, the National Science Olympiad has been canceled for this year. I suspect that the state one will be canceled. Uh, right now, the state of North Dakota on Friday, Governor Doug Burgum declared a state of emergency. Uh, we've had one case of uh, COVID-19 breakout in the state up in Ward County, which, uh, you know, Minot is the big city there, if you've ever heard of Minot, it has an Air Force base, uh, a couple nuclear bombs and stuff. <laughs> but uh, we've had one case so far, and to be fair, we are a rural state, and I joke that we're the least visited state in the nation. I don't know if that's 100% true or not, but we're definitely not a heavily visited state. So uh, we don't get the people coming in from outside. Uh, we do get people that travel in and out, and that's how the virus gets brought in, of course. Uh, you know, people always fear the other, but usually it's uh, your own people. Uh, so I don't know the story behind the guy, because it was a guy, who brought it back, but um, several of the universities in the state have decided to close their campuses and do their classes remotely, which may be, uh, I don't know, it may be a sign of things to come with education too, I don't know. Uh, right now the uh, schools in the state will remain open, the, K the K-12 schools, like the one where I teach, will remain open. South Dakota has shut theirs down, but ours will remain open for now. Uh, but we, the uh, state, the uh, North Dakota State High School Athletic Association, or Activities Association, I guess, because it includes other things, has suspended all events. So there will be no practices, uh, there will be no games, there will be no uh, music festivals, there will be no speech meets, there will be no debate, there will be no nothing. So school is going to focus on academics and that will be it for the foreseeable future. Uh, I guess I've always uh, Wanted to see American schools go in that direction because I, I do think that they focus too much on other things. But uh, I hate to see it happen this way. And I just can't help but think this week the state Class A basketball tournaments were going on. I guess girls and boys. I, I don't really follow Class A, so I don't know how they're structured. Class A is our big cities, our Fargos, our Bismarcks, our Minots. I think Williston, Dickinson... You know, there's a few of them. And uh, it's just done. They're not going to play it out and find out who wins. It's, it's over. And that has got to be very hard on the kids when they make it to state. And uh, done. Uh, our state Class B boys basketball tournament will be next week, but it is now canceled. Uh, my, team, my school did not make it. We got... Uh, I forget, third or fourth in our region, so we, you know, only the winner goes. So we didn't make it to state. Uh, but, again, there's all these kids. They'll never know. This, you know, especially a lot of them are seniors. Uh, they've made it to state basketball, and now they'll never know how it would have turned out. They'll never get that experience. 
And I am not criticizing because I know exactly why we're doing it. Um, this country has been slow to respond to COVID-19, but we don't want to end up in the situation that some other countries have gotten into with this virus. And uh, hopefully now this country is making steps to catch up and solve the issues that we have so that it doesn't become a major pandemic in this country. Um, and uh, I'm not an epidemiologist, I'm not a virologist, I'm not a, even a doctor, so if you want advice or information about COVID-19, don't listen to me. I'm going to try not to give any. Uh, listen to experts, not the talking heads on TV, not the politicians, actual experts in the field. And uh, what do they say? And yes, doctors know more usually than most of us about it. But most doctors don't specialize in that area. So again, the real experts. In fact, uh, oh, it's over there. I don't feel like going to get it. I just finished reading a book called The Death of Expertise. And it was all about how people often ignore what the experts say. And uh, I used a quote, I got in a little trouble for it here. I used a quote a few weeks ago in one of my reviews, uh, Isaac Asimov, uh, that Americans think my ignorance is just as good as your education. And, uh, you know, it's, it's true. We, we do tend to think that we're experts on things that we're not experts in, we don't know much about. Uh, that, that's why uh, a lot of online resources have shut down comment sections on their articles because the discussion and argument that's going on there isn't the reasoned, intelligent, evidence-based argument. It's the feelings and the ignorance. And, uh, well, I read a book. You know, I, I remember sitting in a meeting with a school psychologist, and, and this is a guy with an actual doctoral degree, Psychologist, psychiatrist, I forget. Anyway, see, I'm ignorant too. Uh, but whatever he was, he he has the the doctoral degree. And uh, a parent explaining to him that, that, that they had read six books on this topic and how many books has he read? Like, hello! <laughs> um, yes, because you've read a couple books doesn't make you an expert. I, I love to read. Look behind me. Most of those I've read. There's bookshelf right to my uh, right here that you can't see, covered with books that mostly I've read, a few I haven't. And two bookshelves over there, two more in my bedroom, and then the extra books that just can't fit on the shelves because I have too many books. I'm a heavy reader, but that doesn't make me an expert on anything. Um, so uh, if you want in, I, that sounds like a good topic for a driving video, which I, since there's not going to be any spring sports or anything, maybe I'll have time to do some of them now. No science Olympiad practice. <laughs> Hey, and I'm not even, we have spring break next year. I'm making a concession to Conid virus, uh, and I'm not going to go traveling. I was going to go down to the Black Hills, but I've decided to stay home. So, uh, yeah, maybe I'll get some driving videos <laughs> filmed. Um, I guess I do have some exciting news related to the channel. I'm going to wait on it. Um... I'm, I, I will tell you that the clue was in the selection of pens you saw this week. Uh, and I will neither confirm nor deny if anybody guesses right in the comments. But uh, hopefully in the coming weeks there will be uh, something kind of exciting and surprising happen in relation to this channel that you'll see uh, elsewhere, not on this channel. And after it happens, because it's their show, uh, I will announce it here. But... Uh, yeah, I am kind of excited about it. So, uh, and uh, so far, not quarantined at home, so I'll be teaching. But I, I, I can't help but think, if we end up closing the school for a while, which still could happen. I mean, all, all this closing and cancellation just developed rapidly. Thursday, you know, we were just, all we knew was that the National Science Olympiad was canceled. And uh, what was it? Valley City had canceled their regional so everything in North Dakota just kind of blew up since Thursday. Uh, I think uh, <laughs> you know, I, I will get a lot of videos filmed. I have a lot of house cleaning I want to do. I want to do some pen repair. Um, definitely a lot of curriculum work for school. And uh, so 14 days at home wouldn't be all bad. 
I won't say I'm excited about it. You, you read about people stuck at home in China or Italy and uh, don't know that I want that, but there would be some good in it. And uh, I keep stocked up with food because of blizzards. We're, I mean, we're still in the time of year and we could get blizzards, so I haven't eaten down my stock of food. So if we get a blizzard I, or, or a Conan 19, I'm, I'm set. Uh, by the end of 14 days, the diet may get a little monotonous and I may be getting a little cabin fevery, but uh, I'm fine for food. Uh, fine for toilet paper. I, I didn't go racing to the grocery store to talk, stock up on toilet paper or anything. Uh, so everything will be just fine. And now I know because of uh, Goldie here, which is, uh, I may be filming that first impression today, although I don't know when I'll broadcast it. I uh, now know that people can ship fountain pens and toilet paper rolls. So uh, I will be shipping a few fountain pens out in the next few weeks and uh yeah i gotta shrink the collection somehow so uh don't worry that the arrangements are all made and everything but now i know i can use toilet paper rolls so there is that um so yeah i think that's about all i have i'm running dry and yeah i'm i did the first 25 minutes or so and a, another almost 15 minutes with this stretch because i know because of that camera uh uh, that's got a little less than a 30 minute limit and then it has to reset so i want to thank you for watching <laughs> and if videos like this interest you where i talk about uh, fountain pens both new and old and at all price points i would invite you to subscribe and have you been affected by coronavirus yet uh, i know my viewers in italy definitely have been i'm not sure if i have any viewers in china that would want to say their viewers in china because i know china's funny about social media um, but if I have any, I know you've been affected. If I have any viewers in Iran, that's a country that's been heavily affected. And I know here in the United States, there are some areas that are already heavily affected. So uh, you know, let us know your experience down below. Uh, nothing like a little empathy or sharing your story so that people understand the reality of it, that this isn't just a made up thing. So, uh, well, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.